Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And as you can see behind me, there is an ungodly amount of traffic coming out of the cross-country meet at McDowell Dam, so I just thought, I'm going to get a head start on filming this thing while I wait in the car because I just don't want to back out into that. So, uh, let's look at the pens. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, are you enjoying the last of this great fall weather before uh, the cold starts? Let us know what you're doing down in the comments. Apparently, I'm going to cross-country meets. All right, so these are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. From left to right, I have my uh, Mont Blanc Monteverde Turquoise, a student pen, believe it or not. A Caveco turn it up here. Caveco All Sport, a Visconti Gold Point number one, a Caveco Sport V16 model, you know, vintage, Lamy 2000, this is vintage too, Lamy 2000, I have a Parker 75, which I reviewed this week, or did a first impression this week. Um, I've actually owned it since February, so that's how long I've been using it and writing with it, and you haven't seen it. That was a hard secret to keep. Uh, a Caveco Sport, which went with me today to uh, Minokin. Um, in honor of, I have an Italian foreign exchange student this year, so in his honor, although he'll probably never know, I have an Aurora 88 from his country, not his city, but his country. I have a Platinum President and a Pelican M1000. As always, I will be doing the writing sample in this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. And I just want to note, I have this uh, at an angle. I'm trying to experiment with the light. We'll see how this experiment goes. I have hope for it. But we shall see. The experiment will continue. But I liked the writing I got last week much better because I was able to write at a more natural angle. So we shall see. The other argument is why, fin why fix what isn't broken. Of course, as I'm filming this, it's September the 11th, but, you know, the date I'm supposed to is September the 10th. Uh, I thought about talking about my experience on September 11th, and uh, but then I thought, today, let's uh, remember the people who died and the people who lost somebody, uh, certainly as a citizen of the United States, I was affected, but I think that other people were affected far more. So I, if I ever share my story, which seems rather trite in comparison, I'd prefer to do it not on the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of September 11th. So yeah, not today. So my first pen needs a little exposure help. So I'm so glad I discovered this about exposure. So this is my uh, Mont, Mont Blanc Monteverde Turquoise. I think this is just a nice looking simple pen. Semi-hooded nib. Oops, we got out of the light there. Semi-hooded nib and kind of a fun diamond shaped, whatever you call that, ink windows. Wow. So now, hopefully this will be less... Um, what were they calling it last week? Uh, film noir? Something. They, everybody was using the same term to describe it. Uh, they didn't like this effect. So, this is the Mont Blanc. And for me, I'm so comfortable now because it's like at the angle it's supposed to be. Monterosa. Turquoise. And this is with the extra fine nib. And you might remember that this is one of the pens that was slightly damaged along with my uh, Pilot Custom 823 in that horrible disinfectant disaster. Uh, and I was able to find replacement parts for all the pieces that were damaged. So, yay! Because I really like this pen. Uh, the ink, 
needs a new line. So we'll go with Kyona Oto. I don't know why I indented. Do I always indent? I don't even remember. I do. Huh. Kyono Oto. Hisoku. Which I just think is a really nice looking blue. I should look up what Hisoku means. It may mean stupid American who buys too much ink. But, you know, it's kind of a sort of turquoise, but sort of not. Kind of a muted, understated color, and I really like it. I don't know if you could use this ink in a professional setting, but it's close enough that you might be able to get away with it. Have a little fun with your ink. Woohoo! I'm crazy! <laughs> it's also 8.20 at night because I got home uh, about 7.15 and uh, had to do some stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm also tired. So, yeah, I probably am crazy! All right, so we have our Caveco All Sport. All meaning aluminum. Pocket pen. This is not what I took with me to uh, Minokin today. Look how nicely that writes though. And I don't know why. This pen is a lot more comfortable to hold. And I don't usually like metal pens than the uh, green one you're going to see later in this video. And it could even be the nib, because this nib just glides across the paper. And I know Caveco changed their nib, so I'll probably... That's one of the things I... I have an upcoming video on the Caveco Sport, so uh, new and old, so I will probably talk about that. So this one is Noodler's Ottoman Azure. And I don't know why, for a long time, I thought this word was pronounced Azure, but... Azure. I actually worked for, uh, I won't say where to protect his identity or when, but I worked for somebody for uh, several years in the summer whose last name was Azure, spelled the same way. And of course, I'm lucky I didn't address him by name first before I heard that it, he <laughs> pronounced it Azure and yeah, long, boring story, and who cares? Moving on. One of the pens that you bought me. Let's uh, dial up the exposure so you, we can appreciate it. One of the pens you bought me through the uh, channel Advertising Income. This is a Visconti Opera Element. No, sorry, Visconti Gold Point Number 1. Uh, it, it's the same color as a Visconti Opera Elements Air that uh, Stephen Brown reviewed early on in his channel's history, and I always wanted one, but it had a metal section. I'm just like, oh, no, it's ruined, and I can't. And then I saw this one, not realizing it was a, you know, a totally different, well, okay, not totally, but a slightly different pen. But anyway, it has a acrylic section, and uh, so I bought it. And then I learned it's a special edition, and... Uh, Whatever. It's a pen I wouldn't own if it weren't for uh, this channel, so thank you. I, oh, shoot. Don't be out of ink. Please don't be out of ink. We're not out of ink. We're just not writing. We're being a naughty pen. Got lots of ink in it left. Well, this is awkward. Usually I try and make sure they're writing before I film so I don't have any. That, oops, yeah. But clearly not today. Oh, yeah, because I just got back from a long trip out of town. It is about three hours to Bismarck. From Oops, shoot. Now I just turned it the wrong way and just dripped on my desk. It's about three hours to Bismarck and three hours back. So, yay. Definitely, uh, when you live where I do, nothing is close. 
I was talking to a guy while I was doing the photography. I think he was wondering why I was photographing high schoolers running. Um, he asked me who I was photographing for, and I, you know, told him. And uh, my school, and he says, "Oh my God, that's a long ways away from here." I'm like, yep. So anytime our kids play another school, they are traveling forever. Definitely not a perk of living here. Kyo no Oto. <laughs> Sakura Nozumi. I know enough Japanese, which isn't very much, to know that the Sakura part has to do with the cherry blossoms. I don't know what the rest of it means, but apparently this is uh, cherry blossoms under a cloudy sky. And I think it's a very attractive color. I love these Kyona Oto inks. And uh, they were my one exception to I will never buy... Um, okay, not never. But I'm not going to buy any more inks till I use a certain percentage of my ink bottles up. They were my exception. Until they decided to go start doing sparkly inks. And I'm like, nope. Bailing on that one. So... Now I'm doing, uh, I should dial up the exposure, that seems too dark. See, moving everything around just has messed with me, my life. But I really enjoy the, uh, their ink philosophy, they, you know, they're trying to do natural colors and things, and, uh, then they went with sparkles. All right, my Kvek, ooh. My Kveco V14. Nope, sorry, V16. It's a Kveco Sport. It's one of the early models. And the fun thing about this is it is a piston filler. And it has the same kind of nib arrangement as the other... <coughs> the other V pens. I should also apologize. We've had a lot of smoke in the air. I was feeling it pretty hard last night while I was uh, photographing the football game. So I ended up, even though it's summer, well, fall, but whatever. Summer. I guess it's still summer. I ended up uh, sleeping with the windows all shut and even ran the air conditioner for a while. Um, just to clear the smoke out of my system because I was feeling it. My eyes were burning and I could... Uh, I hadn't been coughing all day, and then I spend my evening outdoors, and yeah, I'm coughing. And right now, I would love to open the windows. But after spending a whole day outside, I feel myself clearing up from all the smoke, which wasn't as bad today, but still. And I'm just like, nope. So I... I've said this before, but when did August become the season where, and now it's September, that we are uh, overloaded with smoke from western fires? I don't remember that being a thing. I remember how shocking it was the first time it happened. And uh, now it's just a regular feature of every summer, and I am tired of it. So, climate change. Alright, so the next pen is my Daily Writer pen. It's a pen I really enjoy. I mentioned, I think, last week about it dripping. And after its second fill, it's not doing that anymore. So I think it had some kind of a pressure issue to work through. Because uh, I've been enjoying it. It's almost ready for its third fill of the year. Oops, too far. So this is my Lamy 2000. has a fine nib and the ink in it is Pelican. Why not Lamy? Because somebody has a one liter bottle of this ink to use up. Who said I make smart ink choices? 4001 Brilliant Black. Now that I know my parents have discovered this channel it's like oh they're seeing my bad habits. Good thing I don't get drunk and go on YouTube or something, because I <laughs> can just imagine. Wa 
Husky Squirrel does a drunken rant on the Lamy 2000 after several bottles of wine. And Mom and Pa Squirrel get to see it all. <laughs> I can't even... Sorry, I don't know why I think that's so funny. Because that would be horrifying. Uh, n n not to mention, you know, all my students and their parents being able to see Wasky Squirrel goes on drunken rant. So, YouTube and alcohol do not mix. And basically, okay, getting drunk is stupid. I mean, I think most of us do it at one point or another in our lives and we say, Oh yeah, that's pretty stupid. So, I gotta look over here because I didn't write down the name of the ink. Okay. So, dial up the exposure. Whoop. Ah, uh, this... <laughs> I, I'm close enough to drunk just by being uh, 8.30 at night. This is my Parker 75 that I reviewed. And usually uh, metal finishes don't appeal to me, but I liked this one. And uh, I heard a lot of different suggestions on how to pronounce the finish, like chisele and chisele and a couple others. And it's chiseled. So, you know, I'm not French. I don't speak French. I don't... French. Uh, one thing I learned... Oops, I made it too dark too quick. There's little lines here. Apparently the nib can be twisted. I did it just because I, you know, it just made it more comfortable to hold. But apparently it can be twisted and they used to sell a tool to do that with to adjust to the user's preference. And I may have to dial down the exposure for this sink. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, and I will admit, I shouldn't admit this, but I filled it up right before I filmed this. Because I realized, oh yeah, you should include this one, even though you didn't use it all week. Um, yeah. I don't think I did the best job cleaning this pen out last week, because this ink... What is it? Was this medium? Something like that. I don't know what size ink it is. Who cares? Uh, but I did a Robert Oster... Um, forgot again. Yellow Sunset. I don't know what it's going to look like on the camera, but it's looking more greenish. And, uh, I don't really remember what ink was in this before. It wasn't Parker Quink Washable Blue, because I've used this pen a few times in the time between I filmed the review back in February and now. So, I, I'll have to look in my notebook to see what it was. And it may not be written down there, because occasionally I would forget. Still do. But, yeah, definitely not as cleaned out as it could be. So, maybe it'll start writing better. But, I, I, you know, I actually, that's not a horrible color. I mean, it's weird, but it's not horrible. So, you know, I may write the pen clear. I may not. We'll see. Uh, the pen that went with me to Minokin, dial up the exposure, is my uh, Caveco Sport. It just fit very nicely in my pocket. I only wrote like two or three things with it. I, you know, I had my, oh, it kind of had a wild day. <laughs> Wee! I don't remember ever seeing it do that before. Yeah, there's ink even in there. Wow. I might wash this pen just because it's turned kind of gross. Ink all over the place. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but wow. I did most of my writing right when I got there, and I wrote one note because I had a set of twins running, and I... Well, okay, there's two sets of twins on the cross-country team. One of the sets of twins is easy to tell apart. The other one isn't. So I wrote down which uh, twin was which so I wouldn't feel stupid when I went to tag the pictures later. 
K-A-W. So this is a Caveco Sport. Has a fine nib. Ink in it is Pelican. 4001. Brilliant black. Um, just a nice serviceable black you know I, I years ago did that video where I said what's the best black and I came up with Lamy black but uh, this was really the second place contender for me and since I have a liter of it to use up we'll just go with it for a while uh, but I just want to mention that with all this ink here on the barrel and all over the section, and, and apparently in the cap. After a day, it, oh god, I even got it on the, that. Okay, you can't see it. Okay, on that, so I'm going to set that knot back in my nice fabric tray. But yeah, that's definitely getting washed. But what I was starting... Ah, yeah. This pen hiked to Devil's Bathtub with me. None of that. And this just has that silly aerometric converter rather than the Caveco Mini converter. Whatever. All right. In honor of my Italian foreign exchange student, my Aurora 88. I thought about doing a vintage one, but then I thought, yeah, he's like 17 or something he probably doesn't even know what that is probably doesn't know what this is either but whatever so this is uh, I can't remember if this is one you bought me through the advertising or if it's one I bought I have bought a few expensive pens don't tell anybody but I have done it feel really guilty when I do it so I don't do it very often but I, I feel a lot less guilty when I'm spending uh, you know advertising dollars so the ink in this is Sailor Gentle not Epinard Sailor Gentle Apricot they had a nice line of colors that uh, they discontinued and brought back now they've discontinued them again Epinard happens to be my favorite of that group, but uh, yeah, this is a very nice bright orange if you're into that kind of thing. Certainly matches my orange pen. And this pen really shows off shading that I haven't seen in other pens I've put it in, so kudos. Aurora 88. My second to last pen is my... Up goes the exposure. <laughs> Platinum President, which is definitely an undersung uh, flagship pen. I really like this model. I don't know why they don't get more attention. Or are they overshadowed by their flashy cousin, the Platinum Izumo? Anyway, this is the Platinum President. I D E N T. Wow. Has a broad cursive italic nib. And I have no flipping clue what ink is in it. Okay, the smell gave it away. This ink is Chiara Green. Made in Japan. Sumi ink, I don't know. So, Sumi ink. Chiara Green. Definitely doesn't look green to me. Maybe a vague blackish green? Is there such a thing as a blackish green? It's a, uh, I don't remember why I bought it. I was uh, 
Okay, I well, maybe because of the bottle. It was kind of cool looking and uh, it was for sale on jet pens and I'm just like, well, that looks interesting. Back then I think I still thought I'd do more ink videos. But yeah, the bottle's kind of cool. They're kind of like little perfume bottles, these different ink bottles that are out there. Oh, there's a little booklet at the bottom I never noticed before. Japanese. Maybe upside down, maybe right side up. I don't know. Oh, vertical! How's vertical? Yeah, now it looks right. And no... Or does this look right? Nope! That looks wrong. This looks right. And no, I don't speak Japanese, but, uh, whole long Japanese discussion about the ink and more. So I may have to, there's Google Translate, I may have to see what uh, Google Translate can do with that. I can't believe I've owned this ink bottle all these years. I never noticed that card in the bottom of the box before. So that was, uh, about as exciting as a fountain pen channel video can get. And my final pen, my, dial up the exposure, my Pelican M1000. Okay, we'll have to decide if dialing up the exposure makes that look green, but as the ink is dried, I'm not seeing the green tint anymore. But anyway, Pelican M1000. With a ginormous nib. This is kind of an odd color. It almost looks kind of milky. Uh, the nib is a uh, medium. I had to think for a second. I kind of want to fine, but I looked at nibs for this pen and oh my God, the nibs cost about what I paid for this pen. So, I feel like a fine nib is not in my near future. Maybe if I can find a gently used one at a price I'm willing to pay. Gentle Pesh. Or something like that. This is an ink I've never liked. But I think it never found the right pen. Because... I think it looks pretty good in this pen. In fact, I may uh, refill this pen. And honestly, you know, I had that Caveco uh, highlighter ink. I, well, I still have it. I just haven't been using it, so it's not in this video. Uh, in the cartridge form, and I used it a little bit to highlight an article I was reading, but... Uh, that's it. This I can use to highlight or I can use to write. Whoa! <laughs> so those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Alright, so I thought I would just continue this in the same style as I started it. Uh, I'm here at home now and I'm about to go film the writing sample. I just really don't want to set up everything. I'll set up enough for the writing sample and call it good. But anyway, cross Country, yes, I wore shorts today. <laughs> cross country is probably, oh. Cross country is probably my favorite sport of all the sports we have at school to photograph. I love it because it's outside. Um, I almost always have to drive somewhere. And usually that means either a scenic tour. A lot of my driving videos were made on the way to and from cross country meets. Uh, or it means... Uh, like today's was in Minokin, which is just east of Bismarck, so went to Barnes and Noble trip. So I always enjoy that. And the other fun thing with the cross country is it's a sport that definitely involves audience participation, by which I mean run from spot to spot. Uh, I don't run like I used to. My uh, knee doesn't like it, <laughs> but I do run. A, you know, I'll run a few, you know, a few hundred yards or something. We'll call that enough, and. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and this course at Minokin is kind of... They end up repeating some spots several times, sometimes in different directions. And uh, so it was actually really easy to... Like with the varsity races, which is a 5K race, I was able to catch the kids four times. The first time it was kind of hard to catch them all because they're still in a big clump. But uh, anyway, I was able to catch them all four times, so it was kind of fun. Um, probably if I felt good about running longer distances I, I maybe i could get could have caught him more than that but it's also kind of hard to run with you got a backpack full of camera gear and you know normally if, if i'd known the conditions like some courses i know oh don't take any lenses except this one uh, but i didn't know because i'd never been to this course before so i took everything and yeah 85 millimeter lens was about all i could use I've enjoyed, you know, some of the races I've been at. You know, the 200 is a lot of fun to photograph with. Uh, it, it just gives a nice effect. So, uh, anyway, that was, that was cross country. Uh, last night we played our first home football game. I had an uh, <laughs> interesting experience. I, can't, I, I guess it really wasn't my experience. Uh, but the school had an interesting experience later this or earlier this week. I um, can't remember if it was Tuesday or Wednesday, but anyway, I think it was Wednesday. I had been woken up really early in the morning. I don't remember exactly what time, but I remember being woken up by sirens. And then I fell back to sleep. So, didn't think anything of it. Walking to school that morning... And my neighbor is driving up from the school because he, of course, had to go look. Uh, he knew what was going on. I didn't. Uh, he, he said, wow, quite a thing going on at the school right now. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so, as you can see in the photograph, what happened is a semi ended up in our football field, plowed right through the fence, uh, got stopped kind of by that slough there. You know, if, if you look, if, if you knew the topography of the area you've got the, a major highway comes up to a stop uh it joins another highway for a short distance through my town and then turns north kind of through the middle of my town so that stop he didn't <laughs> he he plowed right through that puppy and uh he plowed right through that puppy because he fell asleep so that's a little scary with a semi uh, but plowed Straight across, there's kind of a, I'm not, sorry, my uh, thumb is falling asleep. <laughs> the angle I was holding the phone. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure what the business is, but there's a business there. And uh, it's got kind of a dirt parking lot, but, it, you know, it's a steep downhill. And you got another little downhill into a slough. It's basically a swamp. And then uphill to the football field. Well, he went, plowed right through that whole parking area, through the slough, up onto the football field and uh, pulled a whole bunch of dirt and garbage with him. So uh, they spent most of the morning pulling him out of there. I guess uh, that was quite the feat because I know they had two wreckers pulling him. <laughs> I just can't even imagine. Um, you're driving peacefully along and all of a sudden, oh shit! <laughs> um he also happened to plow through the electrical system for the football field, and we had a football game Friday night, and uh, luckily our local electrician was willing to come in and jerry-rig some kind of a, you know, control system to last us through the night, and I guess he's going to come back and do a better job next week. But, uh, you know, <laughs> like our uh, high school secretary said, yeah, you know, it's going to be one of those days at work when you see a semi in the football field. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so last night I was, oops, sorry, put my thumb over the camera. Uh, so last night I was at the uh, football game photographing. I had planned I was going to come home from school, which I did, um, film pens in use and then go back to school, but other things ended up coming up and uh, it didn't happen. And, uh, yeah, so I ended, and, and I knew I had this cross country meet today. So <laughs> here I am Saturday night filming pens in use. So that's how it goes sometime. Uh, I'm going to look at, uh, 
trying to get back on a more regular schedule. You know, I, I love the idea of filming pens in use on Friday because, you know, it's like, here's what I used all week. But, you know, the reality is that I don't too many Friday nights where I'm too busy. So Thursday night's better, but I've got a lot of them that are busy. So I, I got to find a, you know, last year I was filming them on Sunday and it was more of a, here's the pens I'll be using this week. And uh, it's kind of cheating. I thought about switching the night, but uh, I don't know, Friday night's kind of my night. So, yeah, we'll just continue being a little dishonest. Uh, I had some COVID stuff written down, but, you know, I'll just say this. Where'd it go? Oh, it's in the laundry already. I took two masks with me to Bismarck. I don't know why I brought two, but I brought two. This is the one I didn't wear. Yes, they're all squirrels. Um, so I stopped in the grocery store. I mean, there's a couple grocery stores. But I stopped in a grocery store in Bismarck before I went home. Basically to buy supper because I don't want to eat in a restaurant. And uh, the sign on the door said, due to increased uh, risk from the Delta variant, we request that you wear masks. Uh, all of our employees are wearing masks. Let's protect each other. Well, I was wearing a mask, and one other customer in the store was wearing a mask, and that was it. And a lot of the employees... I swear, one of them I saw was wearing his mask like this. Awful lot of this. And uh, a little bit of using it... Here we go. As a chin strap. So really, if we're going to wear them that way, it's just theater. And, you know, I know you can't really control the customers, especially in this state. You know, the uh, sheriff in my county just said, yeah, when the governor came out with a mask mandate last year, he just posted on Facebook, the sheriff's department will not enforce this mandate. Thanks. So we're at, uh, uh, try another angle because my thumb's falling asleep at that angle now too. We're right now at 17 cases in the county, which doesn't sound like much, but it's a county of 3,000 people. So it's shooting up. Um, I guess I'm glad I have my vaccine because, uh, What else do I have to rely on? Nothing. So, and I think if the governor tried to do another mask mandate, I don't think he'd be able to. I think there'd just be mass resistance, and that would be that. Uh, and it's a shame, you know, I, I won't say the mask is a cure-all. It beats nothing. I will say... There is a nice solution out there, a totally free vaccine, and uh, people are still refusing it. Our state is still a little less than 50% fully vaccinated, and it just stuns me how bad some parts of the country are that make us actually look good. Um, my county is right around 42% fully vaccinated, and uh, yeah, it's really tapered off. So, I don't know what the future holds, but uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, except maybe I really hate this camera angle, but if I try and do it face on, this is awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll do this unflattering camera angle that, yeah, makes me look like I have a ridiculously deformed arm. But anyway, so that, that's my week. Um, Try and get back on a more regular schedule. Look forward to, if you're a fan of my book reviews, I'll be doing, uh, um, sorry, I drew a blank there for a second. Dan Simmons' Rise of Endymion on Monday. I don't remember what pen is coming on Wednesday, but there will be a pen on Wednesday or possibly a rodeo. Because come to think of it, I did film a video comparing several models of the Caveco Sport. So could be that's what I have planned. I don't remember, honestly. But if that doesn't come this week, know that it is coming. <laughs> so, uh, 
If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, you know, I got out, uh, enjoyed a nice day outdoors. Um, you enjoying the beautiful fall weather, or is it already over where you're at? Or has it not yet started where you're at? Uh, leaves are turning here, so the days are getting cooler. So let us know down in the comments. As always, I want to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.